Why do Kryptonians possess superpowers? Maybe we're more closer related than we thought. Science behind Superman. Kryptonians, although fictional, are among the most powerful beings in the DC universe. They can leap a tall building with a single bound, react faster than a speeding bullet, and fly into space without any machines or engines or wings. Heck, these guys can shoot lasers from their eyes. That's like, unimaginably powerful. But why do they have these things and other forms of life don't? What makes Kryptonians like Superman so powerful? Well, first we have to take a look at exactly what sets Kryptonians apart from humans. They look pretty similar, but there's some pretty big differences between the two races. First off, Kryptonians have the ability to not only shoot heat lasers from their eyes, but they can also use their vision to see through basically anything. These are two attributes that humans almost certainly don't have, with the exception of a girl who claims she had x-ray vision. Not confirming or denying my belief in that, I have no idea. But it is interesting to see such big differences in two very similar peoples, even though one of them is fictional. The second big difference between us and Kryptonians is the strength that our bodies can hold. As humans, we can get shot and die, none of us are really impervious to harmful penetration, like blades, bullets, slingshots, things like that. And we can break our bones considerably easy, to the point where we wear a gear to ensure it doesn't happen. Kryptonians, on the other hand, don't need any of that because they don't break like we do. Kryptonians can get shot, they can get jabbed at with a knife, they can take a stumble down a cliff, and basically be totally unscathed. Their bodies have much more resistance to outside forces than ours do. Finally, we come to the ability to fly. It's pretty simple. Kryptonians can fly, and humans can't. There's not much more to say on that. So, why do Kryptonians have these powers? Again, humans and Kryptonians look really similar, you basically can't tell them apart. So, what makes us so vastly different from our extraterrestrial cousins? It's two sides to one coin, really. There are two major reasons that our species differ, and it's actually to be expected. This is information that we need to classify extraterrestrial beings in real life as well. Think of this video as a quick guide on universal evolution and species. So, our first major factor in differentiating our species is a term called planetary conditions. Planetary conditions are basically the way the planet that we're referring to is. In this instance, we're going to compare Earth and Krypton. So, unlike the main inhabitants, Earth and Krypton differ a whole lot. Earth is generally regarded as a much more lush environment, with a lot of varying wildlife, ecosystems, and land types. We have oceans, forests, jungles, deserts, polar ice caps, and entire continents. As for Krypton, I'm not actually sure what Krypton looked like in its prime. As far as I know, we haven't seen it like that. What we have seen is a big mechanical jungle in the shape of a sphere. By the time the end came for it, Krypton had been utilized 100% by the Kryptonians, and I would even say that there might not have been any ecosystems left on the planet. The closest glimpse I can recall was actually in the Man of Steel movie, where mountain rangers can be seen in the background. This does give us a look as to what prehistoric Krypton might have looked like compared to our prehistoric Earth. Prehistoric Earth, from what I can see, had three to four main environments jungles, oceans, mountains, and deserts. Now, while we haven't seen a whole lot of prehistoric Krypton, we have seen Kryptonian wildlife. The main Kryptonian animals we'll be taking a look at here are the Zerts, the Fish Snakes, and the Thought Beasts. There are several other examples of Kryptonian wildlife, and I will reference one of them, but these are going to be the three that I'm going to focus on. So, the first thing I notice here is that these forms of wildlife look incredibly like our own, some of which are extinct, some of which are still evolving to this day. Zerts look a heck of a lot like mountain goats, so it's likely that the mountain ranges we observed in Man of Steel was home to them. They likely fed on vegetation much like goats do. As for fish snakes, it's a weird name, but these look like eels to me. In fact, they have electrical properties, and although amplified, it only adds the uncanny resemblance. 
However, where the fish snakes are from is the real zinger. Fish snakes hail from an area known as the Fire Falls, which were literally river falls composed of molten lava. The Fire Falls, aside from being an important region themselves, are described as being located near the Scarlet Jungles, another important region. These two areas give us even more of a look into prehistoric Kryptonian terrain. Other animals of note are the Thought Beast, and this thing, which we'll call the Wing Beast for this episode. The Thought Beast projected its own violent thoughts to intimidate enemies, and both the Thought Beast and the Wing Beast resemble dinosaurs to me. Even the Thought Beast's method of intimidation is reminiscent of several dinosaurs that we know have existed on Earth. With all this knowledge of Kryptonian wildlife and terrain, it's safe to assume that prehistoric Krypton might have resembled prehistoric Earth, but with more radical, inconsistent, and extreme terrain. Which makes sense. An inconsistent terrain would result in Krypton becoming weaker as the ages passed, eventually aiding in its own destruction. Okay, so we've drawn the conclusion that because Krypton had similar wildlife to Earth, its terrain was likely similar to ours at one point. But what does that tell us about Kryptonians? Well, we do know that of course Krypton rotated around a sun, much like Earth does, but it's an entirely different kind of sun. Krypton orbited a type of star called a Red Dwarf. Now, the importance of this is that the Red Dwarf stars are the most common star in our known universe. The reason being is likely due to the fact that they are considerably a weak star. In fact, we cannot see the Red Dwarves near our planet with the naked eye because of how dim they are. Not only are they dim, but they are also relatively cool, only about 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit on the surface, or 2,700 degrees Celsius. That's still really hot, but for a star, that's like keeping one in a freezer. So it is also safe for us to assume that Krypton might have not only been a colder planet, but that its inhabitants had to adapt to a world with very little solar energy. Many forms of life require solar energy to stay healthy, some need it to live. So what did Kryptonians do about this problem? Well, another interesting fact about Red Dwarf Stars is that they can live for a really, really long time. In fact, to put it into perspective, a Red Dwarf Star with a tenth of the sun's mass, which is more or less the average dwarf star, can live up to 10 trillion years. That's a long time. This means that Krypton could possibly be trillions of years older than Earth, depending on what point Krypton came into existence. However, if Krypton had those trillions of years to exist, that puts it as vastly older than Earth, with a lot of its history probably left undiscovered forever. Speaking of prehistory, let's wrap that part of our examination up. This is where we move on to the second major factor that determines differences in our species, evolution. The evolution of a species is dependent on the planetary conditions, and now we know those conditions. Krypton was cold, it had rough terrain, likely had areas of extreme heat, which may have come from pockets of molten lava sprouting from the planet's core, and it had a wide variety of ecosystems, but those ecosystems greatly resembled our own. Right down to Krypton's versions of humans, our extraterrestrial cousins, the Kryptonians. The evolution of Kryptonians is pretty vague, to say the least. Because they are so similar to us humans, and set Krypton bore a striking resemblance to Earth, we can only assume that their chain of evolution may have also been similar. However, there are some key differences that need to be addressed. Why do they need to be addressed? Well, because they're the focus of this video. So again, let's go over our list. Kryptonians can fly, use heat and x-ray vision, have incredible strength and resistance, and can travel extremely quickly. So, why can they do all that? We'll break it down bit by bit. First off, let's take a look at strength and resistance. These are the more simple to explain powers that Kryptonians possess. Their strength is likely due to the harsh environment they evolved in, specifically the gravitational environment. Krypton's gravitational pull was significantly more powerful than Earth, meaning Kryptonians had to evolve to a much heavier environment. On Krypton, Superman is likely an average guy, but on Earth, it's a different story. Because we adapted to less gravitational force, we created a civilization with significantly less heavy lifting than Krypton. And because Kryptonians evolved to bear the weight of their planet, Superman is able to lift planes, boulders, cars, and a variety of large objects with relative ease. As for their resistance, it's a pretty similar concept. Kryptonians evolved to successfully withstand the gravitational weight of their planet. It's also likely that in their primitive days, Kryptonians had to adapt to an extremely unforgiving wild, so a higher level of physical resistance was necessary for survival against predators. Now, let's move on to the more advanced stuff. 
Kryptonians also have the ability to shoot lasers from their eyes, use their eyes to see through solid mass, and can travel extraordinarily fast. This all connects to our previous notions, the main one being that Kryptonians rely heavily on solar radiation, and possibly their own bodily radiation to muster themselves. If it is indeed the case that Kryptonians can produce their own radiation, it's likely that they could use that radiation to change their body temperature at will. This would not only help them to keep warm in the cold environment on Krypton, but it would explain their heat vision. Heat vision is a physical manifestation of the radiation in their bodies. It's likely they use the iris to project high amounts of heat to the outside of their body. For those who may not get that connection, the iris is a part of your eye that projects into the environment to gain information about it for you to see. A Kryptonian's X-ray vision would work in a similar fashion, only a little more dangerous. X-rays require radiation in order to produce electron beam, which is what helps us see through bodies with them. The only issue is, if Superman tried to see through you, it's possible the high exposure to his radiation would kill you. However, this segues us into yet another Kryptonian ability, Super Speed. Now, on their home planet, it probably wasn't considered super speed, it was probably the average pace. However, using good old soups as an example, Kryptonians on Earth would be exposed to a much, much higher level of solar radiation, granting them far more energy than they adapted to. This extra energy could account for the super speed. Not only that, but it account for super fast perception, like how I explained in my video on The Flash. If Superman had the ability at his disposal, he would be able to x-ray you in mere milliseconds, erasing the possibility of death from that x-ray. So we've covered super strength, super speed, super endurance, x-ray, and heat vision. That's a lot of powers, but we still have one more to go. This one is the most complicated. Flight. How do Kryptonians fly on Earth? Notice how I said on Earth. I said that because from what we've covered, I doubt Kryptonians could fly on their home planet. However, I honestly know very little on the subject of Superman's flight, so don't quote me on that one. I looked over several possibilities. It's possible that Kryptonians can fly because of the low gravity on Earth, but that doesn't really make sense because Superman and other Kryptonians have been hovering and shifting themselves around in mid-air. So it's not the gravity. It would explain their ability to leap tall buildings with a single bound, but not flight. So, how do Kryptonians fly? Well, it's not my place to say I looked all of it up. I'll leave an annotation to one of Imaginary Axis's videos on this very subject, and he explains it in far more detail than I will right now. To sum it up, Kryptonians may have been able to fly on Krypton due to a particle they emit called gravitons. Gravitons themselves are theoretical and have yet to be observed. However, if they do exist, it would allow Kryptonians to bend space-time around them, allowing them to freely flow through the bends they can make. Sort of like surfing on space-time. Funnily enough, this explanation links with my theory that Kryptonians produce their own radiation. This radiation, in theory, could allow them to emit these graviton particles, allowing them to take the skies above us. So, that's our extremely lengthy explanation on the abilities of Kryptonians. I gotta say, this was fun. Not only did we take a look at the biology of Kryptonians, we even got a little history lesson on Krypton. But most importantly, we learned what allows Superman to fight for truth, justice, and the American way. Hey guys, hope you all enjoyed the episode of Science Behind Superheroes. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like and leave a comment as to what superhero or supervillain you guys want to see me next in the future. I apologize for how quiet I am right now. Uh, there are certain complications, but that's alright, I'll just turn the volume or something like that. But yeah guys, this video was actually sent by a guy named Luke. I'll link his channel in the description. I'll actually start doing that with everyone who is able to make a suggestion and makes it into a video. I also am linking some of my most important sources now for videos down in the description as well. So if you guys want to go check those out, you guys can go do that. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.